everyone welcome back to another video and um, today i'm really excited to be sharing the mass declutter da -da -da -da. i have been a decluttering fiend for years but just like little bits you know like oh i'll just tidy out my socks or i'll just tidy out my books um and then take them to the church shop or sell them things like that but I live at home so I am now 25 and I've accumulated 25 years worth of stuff which lives in one room one room and whilst this is not a hardship and I would like to preface this video by saying there is no hardship involved here I'm in a very privileged position where I have too much stuff like oh woe is me I recently read a book called Stuffocation which I'll put on the screen here by James Warman and he is a sort of cultural commentator and it's all about how we should be looking not to accumulate stuff but instead experiences and how this will make our lives happier be better for the planet and obviously he goes into much more detail about it but I found this a really I mean if you know me you will have, you will have heard me talking about it let's just put it that way I was on the Marie Kondo trend a while ago like I've been through all the trends and now it's time to try the Mins game one of the resounding themes in the book is that we should be trying to move towards owning less stuff so to kind of like set myself off in the mindset of buying less and consuming less but if I reduce what I have already um, it kind of sets me up to go also I am by no means a minimalist let's just put that out there I am not a minimalist at all I like trinkets I like little things I like collecting things if something's cute I want it and I want to put it on a shelf with all my other little bits and bobs that being said I also don't like to be surrounded by clutter and feel like it's like invading, it's too much. We've all, we've all been there when we've got like that one room or that one drawer or whatever, where it's just like, oh my God, like just shove stuff there and close the door or close the drawer and... Is there a bird there? No. So whilst I'm not a minimalist, James Warman talks a lot about minimalists and people who've gone to the extreme of decluttering where, I mean, there was a one example, two guys who took everything out of their apartments and put it somewhere else. And only when they needed something, they went and got it and bought it. And at the end of the thing, they had hardly any possessions and then they decided to get rid of the rest. And the simplicity of that, and going back to like how we used to live, is supposed to make us feel happier. This is what the, the research says, so we're all with that. So going on to the men's game, um, I saw Leah's field notes um, do the men's game in her own special way. Like I've heard of it before. So what the men's game is, is a 30 day minimalist challenge essentially where you get rid of the equivalent amount of possessions for the day of the month so for example on the first day of the month you get rid of one thing on the 15th day of the month you get rid of 15 things and by the end i can't quite remember the figure here again you should have got rid of about 460 items or something like that so it, it's quite a lot of items i imagine it would be easier if you were living in a house but I thought you know I've got a lot of stuff it sounds like a lot but it's anything down to like one paper clip bigger things like shoes and bedding or books or little scraps of paper that you've got you know the scale is sliding so whilst it sounds intimidating at first I know probably all of us could get rid of 30 pieces of paper with, without even really thinking about it so it's um it's a good challenge I drew myself a little chart and had circles that I could colour in um, when I completed the amount. I followed Leah's example which was instead of doing the traditional men's game of one thing on the first day, two things on the second day, of actually like choosing an amount from 1 to 30 for each day. So like if I was getting rid of handbags for example and I got rid of six or seven and it was the third day of the month I'd cross off seven. So just gradually going through all the different totals to finally get rid of the full amount. Um, today I thought I'd share with you the process and chat you through it and how I found it and then also some reflections on whether I think it worked, how I feel now, um, whether my room has air that can circulate around it instead of just being like a stagnant mess. <laughs> um, so yeah that's the aim of today's video and I hope you enjoy it. So reflections. Um, I found the challenge to be fun. I love anything that's like a challenge that you have to do every day. I find those sort of things really engaging and I always stick to them quite well. For example, I do like yoga with Adrian's January challenge, which is yoga every day. 
and I always do it all the way through January and then I get to February and there's no challenge anymore and then I stop. So <laughs> I'm there for a challenge. So this was good. I set up my chart and at the first I found the whole thing super easy. You know, we all have like a large amount of possessions that we all know we should get rid of but never get around to. So it was really, really manageable to do it every day. Um, because I wasn't trying to do it all in one big go and get really overwhelmed and just stop. So if I could do like seven things here, 22 things here, having a busy day, just do one of the lower amounts, having a quiet day and I could do one amount or even sometimes two amounts, say I've missed a day or whatever. So I kept it quite flexible within the framework. I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself. Number two, I felt like I got rid of a decent amount of stuff, like it was great. I don't have stuff surrounding me and kind of closing in. I feel like I've still got everything I need. And I tried to keep things that I thought that I used regularly and things that I didn't want to have to repurchase. So from a sustainability point of view, for example, like I have a stapler, I don't use it that often. Say I need to do something where I have to staple lots of things. It would be wasteful to go and buy another one. So I kept things that I thought would be useful in the future and I didn't want to have to repurchase um, because decluttering can be a very wasteful activity and that was not my aim. I was mindful of that. I was also mindful um, that some of my friends uh, told me that they regretted getting rid of some things when they were younger. Um, it's particularly nostalgic things, so I was mindful to keep a lot of those things. I suppose on to the next point, number three, is this challenge has helped me find new ways to keep things and record things. So many years ago I started taking pictures of things that I didn't want to actually keep or were big things that were had nice memories attached but they weren't particularly you know that special or anything but I just felt like I'd like the memory of them. With this declutter a lot of what I went through was school stuff and things like that and you know what it's like when you're at school you have like books and books and books and I had piles and piles of paper and I was like this is lovely but I'm not sitting looking through it and it's taking up a lot of space so what I decided to do was which I'm yet to do but I will do is uh take pictures of those pieces of work that felt more special that I remembered or just examples of each thing for example um my history A level it was a subject I really enjoyed and I have good memories from it so I took pictures of representative essays, I took pictures of little lesson things we did, and what I'm gonna do is sort through all the pictures that I've taken and I'm going to put them into photo book. Yes, I've kept a few actual real books because I think it's important to have those memories, but this way I'm gonna have a book that's maybe this thick rather than a pile of paper that's like so, so much. So that's been a really good Thing and actually doing this has made me really think about how I can use my space in a better way. And my final reflection probably links, sorry it's raining, I hope you can't hear that, probably links back to what I was talking about about no pressure earlier. So a lot of the time with challenges, like they're a really good thing to get you motivated, but they can also mean you feel a pressure to do things. And I took this as a no pressure challenge and I actually didn't finish it. So I had a 22 left in a circle, I think, and maybe another 20, but I just felt like there was nothing else I wanted to get rid of. If I really tried, I probably could have come up with stuff, but honestly, getting rid of things for the sake of it, doing anything, ooh, a fly, ah! <laughs> That put me right off. Doing anything for the sake of it is just, there's no point, is there? Like, who are we trying to please? I was making this video, maybe I thought, oh, I should finish it because of that, but, you know, I didn't want to get rid of anything else. I was happy with the amount of stuff that I got rid of. It felt like a good proportion of things. And then also, whatever number this is, five, I don't know, is if you are gonna do this challenge, I would say, make sure to think about what you're gonna do with the stuff afterwards, because I hadn't really thought about this. It's some ridiculous statistic. A very small percentage of the stuff that you donate to charity shops actually gets sold. And the reality is a lot of it gets sent to landfill. My aim was not to declutter and send everything to landfill. So what I did was I recycled what I could um, into our recycling bins, a lot of paper. So that all went into the recycling. Secondly, I got everything at the end and sorted it into stuff that was really good quality for the charity shop, you know, that people will actually want to buy. I took cloves to clove recycling banks if they were wholly or just really not okay. And then the key thing, really, and this sounds greedy, but you should really try and do this if you can, and if you have the time, because it does take a lot of time, is I've kept a box, and I haven't finished it all yet, but I'm just gonna gradually go through it, of stuff that is to be sold, because if you're selling things, 
you know that sort of the person who's buying that, like they're parting with money for it, so they're buying it for a reason, they're not buying it to throw it away. So actually one of the most sustainable things you can do is when you're getting rid when you're getting rid of stuff is actually to sell it. So I know it sounds odd because you think, oh that feels very selfish. Even if you're just selling it for a nominal amount, it's the best way to get rid of things. So I've kept a box of stuff and I will be selling it because who wants their teddies to end up in a landfill? So yeah, it's been a great challenge. Um and I've really enjoyed the process. It's made me reflect a lot on what I use and what I don't use. And also like, for example, with my wardrobe, maybe pull things out that maybe I haven't worn for a while. So that's really fun. Let me know if you give the challenge a go. I'd love to know. I mean, sure, like millions of people have done it over the world. This is a slightly different way of doing it. And thanks again to Leah's Field Notes who inspired this way of doing it. If you want a chart, she actually, when I was halfway through my challenge, came out with a downloadable one that you can colour in like mine, so I'll put a link for that in the description if you want to do it in that way. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again for another one very soon. Bye!